Okay, so in this video we're going to build off of um, the model from our previous video where we ran a three-level, multi-level model in SPSS. We had a fixed level one predictor and now we're going to incorporate uh, fixed level two and fixed level three predictors. So um, in a nutshell, what we're, gonna, what we're trying to predict is variation. When we add in these predictors at level two and three, we're going to be trying to predict variation in the uh, level two, or classroom level intercepts, and level three, the school level intercepts. So the variables that we're going to reference for these analyses um, are basically, um, we're going to start by just kind of looking at some of the level two and level three predictors. So we have one variable right here called uh, teacher effectiveness. So this is a measure of teacher effectiveness. You'll notice that for all of the students uh, associated with teacher one, these this is basically the effectiveness score for teacher one. And so all of the students basically uh, have, you know, associated with it, with them uh, that uh, teacher effectiveness score. These are the teacher effectiveness levels for teacher two within school one and uh, so forth. Um, we also have um, essentially this variable uh, that has been uh, centered, so grand mean centered. So you'll notice that we have some values that are negative, some values that are positive. So the positive values would reflect, you know, um, yeah, I guess you could say uh, greater levels of effectiveness uh, associated with the teacher, and the negative values would reflect, you know, really more uh, less effectiveness. We also have classroom low SES mean, and so this variable right here. Uh, is um, the values um, associated with a given teacher is reflecting uh, the proportion of students identified in a given class uh, identified as low SES. So for teacher one and school one, 25% uh, of the students in that teacher's class were identified as low SES. Uh, these students right here, uh, we had basically 28% of the students uh, in teacher two's classroom within school one were identified as being low SES and so forth. So we also have um, essentially a, a grand mean version of this uh, variable as well. So, um, you know, so it's centered um, at the mean and for this particular variable. So you'll have some values that are positive, some values that are negative. Uh, positive values would reflect, um, you know, um, uh, greater um, proportions of um, students in uh, a given teacher's classroom as being low SES and negative values would reflect uh, a lower proportion. Uh, we also have a um, school low SES mean so basically um, this is kind of reflecting the proportion of students within uh, a given school identified as low SES. So you can see that basically the point two twos are associated with all the students who are in school uh, one. So 22% of, um, of the students in school one were identified as being low in SES. We had 36% uh, identified uh, as at low SES in school two and so forth. And so there's also um, uh, right here we have um, essentially um, a grand mean centered version of that variable. So to, to be consistent with the textbook, we're going to really uh, be relying on um, the uh, class low SES that's been grand mean centered, the uh, teacher effect that's been grand mean centered, and the school um, effect that's been grand mean centered as well. So uh, are for these particular variables. So to run our analysis, we're going to go to analyze uh, mixed models linear and go to uh, continue and then uh, now what we're going to do is we're going to add in those grand mean centered versions of class low SES, uh, uh, teacher effect, and then uh, school low, low SES variables. So we have right here, this is the grand mean for class low SES, so we're going to move this over. We also have uh, the grand mean for the teacher effect effectiveness variable right here. Uh, and then we also have the school low SES uh, variable right here. So now we're going to click on fixed and move these variables over um, to, uh, to the, the box on the right. Make sure that when we do this, we're going to do it all together. We need to click on main effects to move it all, or you can do them individually. So we've got all of our fixed effects uh, that are now incorporated. And so, uh, you know, 
we have our random effects laid out exactly the same as we had discussed in the previous video. Uh, estimation is exactly the same and our statistics are going to be exactly the same as before. So we're going to click on OK. And so now you can see, uh, looking at uh, the output, you can see that we have, um, you know, this is our uh, grand mean center level one predictor, which is low SES. So you can, so remember that based on the coding, um, you know, essentially a, a value of one on the original variable is reflecting low SES, and a value of zero on that variable is reflecting uh, not low SES. Um, and then we utilize the grand mean centered version of this. Um, so, you know, basically high, the higher value would reflect low SES. So you can see right here that the negative coefficient uh, indicates that you know, those students that were in the low SES also tended to perform worse on math achievement. So there's our regression coefficient at level one, and that predictor was statistically significant in the model. The level two predictors that we have right here uh, are associated with the, the classroom and the teacher. So you can see right here that uh, the classroom uh, proportion for low SES, um, there was a negative coefficient right here. So in other words, basically classrooms that had a higher proportion of low SES students also tended to exhibit lower levels of math achievement. And that relationship was statistically significant. Um, also, we see that um, in terms of uh, teacher effectiveness, um, you know, basically, um, you know, classrooms that tended to have uh, higher levels of teacher effectiveness tended to perform better on math achievement. So you can see that that effect was statistically significant. So just keep in mind the signs of your regression coefficients. Essentially, we're finding that students who are lower in SES tended to perform worse in math achievement. Uh, classrooms that were com comprised of a greater proportion of students with low SES tended to perform uh, more poorly. But classrooms that incorporated teachers that had a higher level of uh, teacher effectiveness tended to perform better on math achievement. Then the last uh, predictor right here, we have uh, school low SES mean. So you can see we have a negative coefficient here, and this would signal that, you know, um, that um, schools that had a higher proportion of students identified as being low in SES tended to uh, have students who performed more poorly uh, on math achievement. And we find that that predictor was statistically significant in the model. So uh, scrolling down and looking at the, um, the variance components, we see again the, that the uh, variation of the residuals at level one there's a variance estimate. It was still statistically significant. So theoretically, there are other predictors we could add at level one that may help to account for that variation. Um, the the level uh, two uh, predict uh, variation at level two is still statistically significant. So uh, you know even after we added in the uh, classroom and teacher effectiveness uh, predictors, we still had significant variation. Uh, between classrooms and teachers that, that uh, could be explained potentially by adding in additional predictors. And then the level three uh, intercepts, we see that that variance estimate is still statistically significant, indicating that there are uh, potentially level three predictors that may help to explain the variation um, in, um, in math achievement uh, across the schools.